everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we are here talking about The Way Home, which is starting back up this weekend. We're really excited. Season two. We really enjoyed season one. And uh, we are here for just before. We do this before all the shows, a uh, new season. We try to do like a little preview and uh, and tell you what we're excited for, what we remember from the previous season, all that fun stuff. And I'm film critic Grace Wagner and Casey's here. Hi, everybody. Yay. Excited to be here. Yes. Uh, so last year, uh, you know, we had obviously the first season, and but we didn't have you in any, on any of the Way Home recaps last year. Uh, tell us what you thought overall of the, of the show. Oh, oh, you guys. (laughs) So I, so I know that Rachel, I know you are, you're not terribly fond of the shows necessarily all the time. Like I know that, like, you know, that's the thing. And I I get that. And so I was kind of feeling the same way as you last year. I'm kind of like, great, another show. Like, (laughs) well, we'll see. I didn't watch the first two as it was airing. I kind of waited to hear what people were saying. And then I got very curious. And I think it was around the third episode, mm-hmm. like right before the third episode aired. I think I decided to watch the first two. It was either yeah. third, third, third or fourth. I can't remember which one. But um, I was immediately drawn in. Like the moment <laughs> about, I don't know, halfway into the first episode, I went, uh-oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be so bad for me if number one if they i don't know yeah. if they decide to kill it off if they decide to just like go 500 different directions with it because it's one of yeah. those time travel jumping from one universe to the other universe like you have mm-hmm. to do it really correctly you have to have a vision you can't just go into it all like yeah willy-nilly and stuff and so um i was immediately hooked i was drawn to the characters I really loved how they did all of the flashbacks, flash forwards. I loved how they had Alice jumping back. There's a lot of um, complexities to it. A lot of complexities with the storyline, complexities with the characters, with the relationships. I mean, I had a whole, like, I had a whole board going. And I'm like, I don't even think that I can fix this timeline in my head. Like, I, I, wow. So I'm really excited for this weekend's premiere of season two. Yeah, I I was nervous going into it because I I, mean, I like some of the shows and I like it well well enough that homework has done. I mean, I certainly mm-hmm. like Science Still Delivered a lot, and I like I like When Calls the Heart. Uh, for the most part, I enjoy it. I but it's not like my favorite. Um, and I liked Good Witch, uh, but mm-hmm. I, I tend to be a little bit pickier when it comes to teenage drama so mm. when i first heard the show i was like oh i don't you know like the teenage angst ain't my jam mm-hmm. and so i was like oh no uh but i i think the show works so well in a lot of ways one the 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 relationships are so well done the uh the casting is so well done but also it was a really fun show to watch together i would encourage everybody if they can to to watch week of if they can because it was a fun show to uh, watch together and be like oh mm-hmm. look there was you know 1814 on that am- almanac or that was this little clue here mm-hmm. or that was this there and people notice different things and even just in our little group chat that we have you know people would notice different things and we talk about it and and, uh, and so i i think it was it was a fun show like that that we hadn't really had a show like that that at least my friends had all been kind of interested in and mm-hmm. watching for a long time yeah yeah, you you are so right. You are so right because this is the first show that I feel like everybody's invested. Mm-hmm. Like you said, everybody's looking for the clues, and we're all talking about it. It's not divisive. Yeah. <laughs> it's not dramatic. <laughs> like, right. like just make sure the first like yes. four seasons, Rachel should know. Like, we yeah, it together. <laughs> So, just make sure it's take me to a dark place. <laughs> I know it improved once I, once I stopped following. But, uh, but, but yeah, uh, it, it, it just, it was like a real, they used to call them water, co- water cooler shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it then, and I feel like 
that this is like a genuine water cooler show. Mm, yeah. You want to talk about it and be like, oh, what about, you know, what do you think's going on with Brady? What do you think's going on with, with mm-hmm. there's teenage cat and regular cat and, you know, all the difference. What's what happened in 1814 and where's Jacob and all. Of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's so fun. It yeah, is, it's really it is fun. Really it's really so fun. fun. More confidence would be in the, the team for uh, Heartland with Heather Con- Conkey and Alexandra Clark. And we've interviewed mm-hmm. Heather on this pod before about Harland and uh, they're good writers. And it makes sense that you'd have a mother daughter team writing this mm-hmm. show. Yeah. Yes. Uh, because it's very mother daughter centric. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, they nailed on the complexities of that relationship. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, well, so we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about some of the things that where they left off and then we'll talk about uh, some of the previews that we've seen. And, I haven't had a chance to rewatch the show. So if I get a few details wrong, please, <laughs> please forgive me. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, but we we're just kind of talking about it like friends. And, and so if you're listening and watching, uh, put your comments and your thoughts on what you're thinking about these different things. Uh, and we want to hear that too. And it can be a fun discussion. Uh, but I thought we'd kind of, the way that made the most sense to me is to go over each of the time periods and then also sort of the characters. Mm-hmm. So, let's 1814 we don't know that much about no we got it at the very beginning we've seen that there's the almanac mm-hmm. in 1814 which people have signed and we know that cat at the end is the white witch kind of type mm-hmm. character that's all yeah. we that all that i could remember is i think that we know about 1814 yeah i'm pretty sure that's all we know about 1814 yeah so i mean i think we're gonna learn a lot more in season two Mm-hmm. yeah oh for sure yeah. <laughs> for sure there is yeah. going to be some major things happening yeah i mean based off the previews alone yeah so yeah i mean i would be surprised if we find out that because we know that the the we know that the house has been passed down through generations mm-hmm. it seems like we wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised if we find out that one of the past owners of the house was a jacob or named jacob or something like that um Uh, i mean they might not be that obtuse but they they might find out that it just seems like that's i i feel like jacob is in 1814 somehow yes that was my guess is that jacob is stuck in 1814 Mm -hmm. and then my brain went into the parallel so like if x amount of time has passed so jacob has aged that amount of time so is he gonna be like uh, is the pawn gonna take her back to five year or not five year old how old how old was he like 10 yeah because see that is an interesting question because how old because it because the pawn could have taken him back even further and so he could be an adult in 1814 right we don't we just don't know right i don't i mean i don't think that we've gotten any clues yet about jacob's age in 1814 yeah so that's gonna be interesting Mm -hmm. yeah it really will it will and uh, and you know that we see cat as this white witch in 1814 so somehow she gets there Mm -hmm. and uh, and you know at the at the end of the last season you know everything kind of goes crazy so like how does she end up going back the pond and you mm-hmm. figure she must have to stay there for quite a while if she is this like leader or whatever yeah yeah so she yeah so we know she goes back so oh we do also know in the um previews that she and alice jump in the pond one for one last time and her mm-hmm. mom never sh- resurfaces right so that's another thing Mm -hmm. um is that when they go is that when she goes back to 1814 how long and then the other part of that too is uh, there's um adele yeah that's a big question that that is a big question that we don't know is what does Dell know about the pond does she know about the pond at all it seems like Mm -hmm. she'd have to know about it but maybe not i don't know what do you think i don't know she's made some really sketchy comments (laughs) But has like, she used the pond i mm, that's a good question 
She seemed to indicate, I, I feel like when I rewatched it months and months ago at this point, um, the very first episode, she mentioned something about how the dog keeps coming out of that pond or something mm-hmm. like that. I cannot mm-hmm. remember the exact phrasing, but I remember mm-hmm. going, oh, there's something there. So like, yeah, It seems like if she knew about it, she would be trying to find Jacob in the pond. Yeah. But she Unless... doesn't seem to be. Unless she's tried and failed. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. Dell yeah. is just a whole big question mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whole big question mark. I, it's, it's interesting because, yeah, not only do we need, and we'll talk about 2023, but we need, we need the pond to, we need cats to come to, go through the pond and and write herself the letter so that she then moves uh <clears throat> and then uh that so there's so many layers particularly to cat's character mm-hmm. of okay so we've got her as the as the white witch in 1814 we've got her sending the letter to herself mm-hmm. so she has to somehow she's that has to work uh and then uh and you know we've got her as a teen in 1999 and as a real person um, as her norm as her mature person mm-hmm. uh and her dad recognizes her as a mature person mm-hmm. and says cat so what what is going on but yeah. uh but yeah so 1999 we've got lots to talk about i'm jumping ahead We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode and that is the Hallmarkies Patreon do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch-alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. So this is where Jacob gets lost in 1999. Mm-hmm. Yes. So- yeah. And I, I think it's pretty obvious that he's somewhere in time. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, it would make the most sense that he's in 1814. Yeah. Yeah. 100% makes the most sense yeah. that he is stuck in time somewhere. Mm-hmm. Likely 1814. Yeah. Um, now, okay. So the 1999 characters. Yeah. I just have to say, I thought they did a stellar job casting for the 1999 versions of the mature adults. They Mm. are so, like, whoa. (laughs) They really, I I agree. They really did an incredible job with that. (laughs) Yes, yes. So That was not easy. No, not at all. I mean, so good. The mannerisms, everything, I mean, they fantastic um now my question is are we going to continue going back to 1999 or are we going to grow with these characters through the through the season so mm-hmm. is this going to be like we're going to see the turn of the century 2000 yeah. are we going to keep moving into well it is hard to know because it's hard to know because they don't choose where they go so will the pond choose to take them to 1999 Again, I can't imagine that it won't. I I just have to think that we'll be back there, especially with what happened with her dad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think that we'll be back there. But uh, but that's what makes the show kind of intriguing. Is that it's it's not like a, a there's not like a TARDIS or you know a DeLorean or something like that where they can pick where to go. Yeah, it just true. whatever the pond chooses. That's true. That's you know, true. is is interesting, mm-hmm. and uh, and. I can't remember, but how long it, if they're if they're in the pond, how long does that do you remember how long that is in like present day? Like I remember they said that there was I, like so many days in the pond were like so many days. I uh, think it mirrors 
minute by minute. Is it minute by minute? I was thinking it was like a little bit faster, but I can't remember. I because because there's that episode where they're all scared where Alice is. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes, yeah. where she gets lost and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but it makes sense because when she was when she fell into where was it? When there was that one episode, I feel like she spends the night. And then she leaves uh-huh. or something like that. And yeah. then she comes back. She's coming and back. And they're all really morning. mad at her because she's yeah. been gone for like a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, it's, if anybody remembers exactly that whole timetable, uh, let us know in the, in the comments. Uh, but yeah. So in 1999, they try to save Jacob in episode nine. Mm-hmm. They, she thinks she's got him home. He's safe. He's not because they think, oh, she was, he was abducted at the carnival or something like that. There was kind of Mm -hmm. like a creepy dude at the Ferris wheel. They think something like that. And, uh, and so then when they come back and he's still gone, he wasn't saved. Mm -hmm. He's still, uh, then things start to get kind of layered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we know that the, 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 like you were saying that the dog had been in the pond. Mm -hmm. So that's why it seems like, okay. So after she dropped him off, he went, followed the dog, went in the pond. Yeah. 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 And that, yeah, that seems to be the most logical because she physically walks him home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's got to be something like that. Mm-hmm. Well, so then we also have Alice. She has this relationship with Nick. And uh, and then oh. we see grown up Nick with Carrie James, who is from Heartland. Mm-hmm. Carrie James. And they another great match really good job oh yeah uh, yeah. a grown-up nick and uh and he doesn't grown-up nick doesn't recognize her at least that's what he says yes yes mm-hmm. yes yes yeah. which i mean why why would you 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 immediately wouldn't be like somebody time traveled like you would just be right like, oh, you know? right Right. I mean, it makes sense to me, especially because if they didn't take any pictures or if he didn't have any photos, like, I don't remember kids I went to, like, elementary school with because I'm not I'm not that old yet. (laughs) (laughs) And I don't have pictures of these kids that I went to elementary school. It's like I could not pick them out of a lineup. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it makes sense to me why he he's kind of like. Yeah. Well, it seemed like he'd been kind of away and she certainly obviously mm-hmm. had been because she was from a different time period. Right. Uh, and uh, and I, I think about for me, that's what's sort of funny about this show is that it's set in 19, has 1999 is sort of the, the nostalgic time period, which <laughs> makes me laugh because uh, that's when I graduated from high school was 1999. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not ready for this. <laughs> I won't say I was nine years old in 1999. (laughs) I mean, I technically, I finished high school in, because I kind of graduated early. So I was done in 1998, but uh, my official graduating class would have been Mm -hmm. 1989. And uh, so it's just sort of funny. I'm like, (laughs) how has that that already happened? (laughs) Welcome to the Pilot Podcast. My name is BJ. And my name is Me Too. And we promise this promo is worth it. So please don't skip ahead. We're two judgy friends who put our judgmental skills to work for you. We review the pilot episodes of new and popular shows and shows that our listeners request to answer your question, should I watch this? Look, a lot of us are spending a lot more time at home, and yes, we should be reading and trying new projects and enriching ourselves, but does anything beat binging a great show? Let us take the guesswork out of deciding what your next show will be. Tune in to The Pilot Podcast at thepilotpodcast.com. Or, uh... Uh, you know, I love the nanny and on the nanny, she's mm-hmm. always like, I'm 29 forever. And I always think, what? Well, that's so lame. Yeah. But now I kind of get it because you do sort of, you don't really feel any different. No, I'm about to turn 43 and I feel the same. I don't feel like old. That's good. That's yeah. great. <laughs> that gives me hope for the future. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, uh, and so do you think that Nick is basically done or do you think we're going to hear more about Nick? Um, I think we'll see Nick. I'll see, I think we'll see um, present day Nick maybe a, f- a few more times. Yeah, I think he's going to come circle back. I don't know that he's going to have a main storyline or anything like that. But I think that he's going to 
It would be a shame if Carrie James didn't come back. I know. To be honest. Could, yeah. And I could see him being like, wait a minute, wait a minute, maybe putting a, may, so I could see maybe have an episode where we see Nick again. Yeah. Yeah. I think that could be fun. It could be fun. And, uh, and then, oh, so Teen Elliot finds out about all of this mm-hmm. in 1999. So yes. he knows and uh, about Alice and who Alice is. And uh, it becomes this kind of burden on his life. Mm -hmm. that everything has been sort of foretold and he's sort of involved in all of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, what did you think about that kind of plot line? It was smart because somebody has to know where Alice is. Somebody has Mm -hmm. to like rescue her kind Mm -hmm. of like in Biltmore Christmas where they had the friend that found out about Mm -hmm. the time traveling shenanigans. Right. Yeah. And she's like sitting there like (laughs) waiting, making sure nothing's going to happen to the, (laughs) The little time thingy um uh-huh. so i i like that um i i like that um storyline and i think it was smart to keep him in the know but it also made him more complex because yeah. had they left him out of the loop he would just be there like right. you know what i'm saying like he's just this dude who's pining away for cat uh-huh. and he's the you know the hot teacher that we're all kind of like cheering for <laughs> Right. He has purpose and he has a complexity to complexity to him mm-hmm. that he wouldn't have had had yeah. he not had to carry this burden, essentially. Um, so I think it makes for good character mm-hmm. uh, development and character story. Yeah, I think so, too. And it gives some will they, won't they for him and Kat and, and uh, is some because sometimes in these types of stories, it's like, why aren't they just together? Like, mm-hmm. what's going on? But there is some motivation, some reason for his his character. Do we have they told us? Do we know who the pond? Like, has Elliot tried the pond? Do we know that? Yes. Remember? Yes. Okay, yes. So because when um, when young Al, when, oh, sorry, not young Alice. When Alice goes back to 1999, she tells Elliot, and she's basically like, "Watch me!" And she jumps into the pond and she disappears. So then he goes in the pond. And he's like yelling for her. It's like one of the very first right. couple uh, episodes. So yeah, yeah. Um, he's tried the pond, but yeah, he's not been able to go. Mm-hmm. So it only works for the Landrys. We mm-hmm. know that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Only as far as we family. know. For as far as we know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, let's see what else going on in 1999. We have that we have this plot line of Dell thinking that Colton is cheating on her, mm-hmm. but he's actually going to the support group once Jacob is gone. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, so uh, I think Jefferson Brown, I, I mean, I hope that we do see him more. Mm-hmm. in uh, season two even though he his character died in season one because mm-hmm. i love yes. him he's great oh oh yeah i was kind of like bef- <laughs> like where have you been all my life <laughs> <laughs> i mean when when hope calls and now the way home i'm like yeah well and he was on the good witch okay uh yeah for like two seasons we loved his character his character's name ben and he was love interest for stephanie and right. and then uh, and then all of a sudden he was just gone and we were so sad yeah <laughs> he, needs to, yeah, he's he definitely needs to yeah and his interview is really good that he did with us jefferson I, and it's one of the most popular interviews that we've done so mm-hmm. yeah, yeah he's got lots of fans he's he's he great <laughs> yeah he's great so hopefully we'll see more of him and uh, and obviously like him recognizing cat before mm-hmm. he dies is like a big deal how would he know what she looks like i mean would he just know what his daughter looks like as an adult uh or does he know about the time travel somehow some way yeah i mean that made my head spin because it's like okay now does the pawn take cat back a time like yeah in the future but to the past of the past (laughs) in the uh, same timeline like you yeah. know what i'm saying that's why yeah. i love this show because like my mind is just <laughs> <laughs> well it's like our friend mary was saying she hadn't watched like the last two episodes and i'm like you gotta watch the last two episodes. oh yeah you can't skip those last two episodes like, they're like really big really important they're so uh, good 
Yeah, because uh, originally he had he had died in the car accident, and then she, in but then it turns out that kind of the cliffhanger is that like he was trying to swerve off of her, mm-hmm. so she caused the car accident. Yes. that killed her dad. So that like was a lot of a lot of stuff going on there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But did she cause the <laughs> so this is again goes back to the twisted yeah. nature of these time travel shows. In the original timeline, is that how he died? Is because she mm-hmm. came or and then did how she would alter you... the timeline so that mm-hmm. he still died, but she was the cause of it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's just Yeah, we don't I don't think we know. Yeah. But how would you live with that if you knew that he was he, he could have possibly driven home and been fine mm-hmm. but he swerved to miss you mm-hmm. uh, and but she already tried to fix one of the things with Jacob and it didn't even work so mm-hmm. and here she's trying to kind of help her dad and it makes it even worse right, uh, right. but then he recognizes her so what does that mean right i don't know yeah yeah so her attempts to save her family have very much. <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarkie in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. I also do think that it was impressive in this show that y- you have male characters who are strong and masculine, but also like very comfortable with their feelings and mm-hmm. support and getting support. And, and uh, I don't know, I just, I think that it's a good, it's, it's, it would be wrong to just describe this as just like a female centric show Mm -hmm. because the three leads are are women. Mm -hmm. But I think that the way that the men are are written is also very strong. Yeah, I agree. I really like the support group episode. Yeah, Um, that was, that was really good. That was really, really well done. Mm -hmm. And I liked that they were able to layer Mm -hmm. um, his character with those things because that's all i mean losing a child like that especially in that time (laughs) in that time period so long ago 1999 um you know that i mean you know even i remember way back when i was in high school right (laughs) when i was a child (laughs) um (laughs) as a 90s baby myself i mean i remember feelings were not something you talked about really you know that wasn't a thing right so it was really nice to to see that yeah so 2023 like i said we have cat sending the letter to herself we know mm-hmm. that happens yes and then elliot leaves because he's tired of being controlled by the destiny of these women mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> which and... i mean to be fair <laughs> yeah. to be which fair makes sense. It, it does make sense yeah. it, he carried a you know 23 year old secret yeah. for so long and now he's free mm-hmm. <sighs> but then we also have we have the dissolution of the marriage between Kat and Brady. Mm-hmm. And there's some jealousy there between Elliot and Brady and Elliot and Kat and that whole relationship. And they, uh, and then Elliot and Kat start to date for just like a, a drop in the bucket. We get a nice kiss, things like that. That was a and- good kiss too, man. <laughs> it, really Woo! Was. it really was. Uh, and, uh, and so, but you know, that Brady and Elliot have a past, mm-hmm. Uh, you know if that where's that going to kind of come in um we also have alice and uh there's alice and nick but then also like maybe a little bit alice's i think it was spencer Mm -hmm. uh her friends and things like that yeah and then you also have dell and byron that was like briefly a shot in Mm -hmm. the pan and uh, i don't think we'll have we'll see any more of him i think yeah any more of that 
Um, but then we also have this whole thing with the town and this carnival that they all put on hold mm-hmm. for because of Jacob. Yeah. And uh, and it just seemed like a long time mm-hmm. to put something, you know, it's 20 years uh, to not do a tradition like that. Yeah. Seems, seems surprising. Oh. Uh, but, uh, but let's talk a little bit about season two. And we'll just talk about the uh, the summary of. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about the summary. It says uh, Dell recreates traditions of family summers past. Alice misses her friends, and Cat grapples with Jacob's mystery in the wake of losing Elliot. It's called the space between. So, oh. what do you think? Oh, <laughs> I mean. It- there, I mean, wow, <laughs> I don't even know what to think here. Um, you know, I hope that they tackle Alice having Alice and her friendships, and I hope that they tackle her having friendships in present day, yeah, you know, because that's important. I think that's mm-hmm. important for a teenager to have friends, yeah, and you know, if she's not able to go to the pond to connect with her friends from 1999 mm-hmm. i mean that's 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 really hard yeah. to feel kind of isolated and alone but at the same time she's kind of in a sense shooting herself in the foot by mm-hmm. not trying to create any of these relationships so. yeah and i think one thing they could even expand upon is that she became so close to teenage cat mm-hmm. and uh, and so where does that friendship how does that friendship impact her relationship with present day mother Mm-hmm. you know because yeah. we don't tend to see our parents especially when we're teenagers as people as as friends in that mm-hmm. way you know right that, uh, that we do uh and, and uh so i i think that that could be interesting like her it, it, it could be an interesting thing for her missing her friend cat when mm-hmm. that's her mom right you know? and that's gotta be weird for her mom because it's like dude it's me right <laughs> it's still me yeah yeah, I think so. Uh, and uh, so we also have a couple other questions that I found online that I thought were interesting. So we have, how is Kat supporting her family now that she's been fired from her second job since the series began? So she was fired from the the newspaper. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that could be interesting to see what mm-hmm. happens there. That's true. Yeah. And also the newspaper is such a, is, is a great spot for her because she can research all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, what was yeah. happening in 99. Yeah, it gave her an excuse. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then does the grown-up version of Jacob's friend Danny know more than he is telling? Because there is that whole thing where they... Because uh, one of the things that I thought about last year was, are there more than one magic pond? Is it only this one or are there other like oh. keys? Yeah, you know, because they made a big deal about the the bay or the... Yeah, because there was like... The whole thing with him like them like fighting or something and he gets like pushed off uh or uh something like that that what if there are other kind of like port case going on mm-hmm. that uh because yeah. i think they said that him and jacob like had a fight right yes they yeah. had a fight on the way home and then i think they they separated ways uh-huh. because they were fighting and yeah. so and then Jacob just never showed up. But where he disappeared was going towards like the bay or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it was like the bay, and there was like a cliff or something. Yes, yes. So I was like, is there another Porky? That would be interesting. Mm-hmm. That would be interesting. But uh, but yeah, do you think that Danny knows more? Or are we done with him? You know, I I don't know. I I would not be surprised if Danny knew more. Mm-hmm. But he would have been traumatized as a yeah. kid. And so, because yeah. he barely speaks now. Like, right. you know, he's very quiet and stuff. Yeah. And so, I, I do wonder if he knows a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the last question is, does Del know and has she used the Landry Pond to do time traveling on her own? That's the big question. We kind of yeah. talked about that. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's really hard mm-hmm. to say. They've done yeah. a good job obfuscating that. Yeah, they really have. Yeah. <laughs> and one thing I have to give this whole cast, uh, well, I mean, especially uh, Alice and, and Kat, uh, I just because 
uh, how much time they had to spend with like wet clothes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, the worst. <laughs> wet jeans are the worst. Yes, yes, especially wet jeans. Yes. So that must have been awful. <laughs> yeah. And do you know when they fill? It would have been fall winter, right? Uh, it seems like it, it. You know, I. It's hard to say when this season was filmed. Um, I mean, maybe I could find it somewhere online because mm-hmm. it, it wouldn't have been fall winter because that. I mean, I guess unless they got a reprieve from the yeah from, from the, the strike, which some Hallmark stuff did, so maybe. Um, and some of it didn't need it because was I guess this month might not need it because I think. Oh, well, I don't know. Is Andy McDowell? She's not Canadian. So, because that was the problem when it calls mm-hmm. the heart. So you had Aaron, because you had Aaron, who's not Canadian. So, because mm-hmm. there's a different union. Canadian actors have a different mm-hmm. union. Yeah. But for Jack and for, um, uh, for Jack Aaron. Wagner and, and Aaron, they needed uh, their SAG members. So mm-hmm. anyway, um, but let's see if this says it's filmed in Ontario, IMDb. Um I'm not seeing. Well, I know it started after When Calls the Heart. And When Calls the Heart started in like July or something like that. Oh, did it? It started after that? I think it did. Oh. So yeah, they must have gotten an appeal or whatever. That's yeah. So yeah, that would be freezing. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So, but we're really excited. Uh, I gave it the full highest score in the preview that i did with greg uh because i just had such a good time with the experience of watching it was mm-hmm. a lot of fun last year yeah and uh and uh so yeah it was i mean my favorite show is all creatures great and small that's my top show mm-hmm. but uh and you would love that show by the way oh. um and then uh and then this is my i think my second favorite show oh okay yeah. i was... really enjoyed it it was yeah. really fun so that's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let us know. I know we didn't cover everything. We didn't answer all the questions, <laughs> but this is just a fun chat to kind of give a little preview and to to talk it out. So uh, so let us know what your favorite parts were, what you're looking forward to, what your theories are, all that stuff in the comments. We'd love to hear it. And uh, and we will be doing uh, recaps. Uh, I'm a little bit unsure kind of what's going on and, and uh, how that's all going to work, but we'll do as many as we can and we'll we'll do what we can so uh if people want to follow you on socials how do they do that um you can follow me on twitter x and instagram at casey underscore underscore simpson k-a-y-c-e underscore underscore s-i-m-p-s-o-n great and uh, you can find me at rachel's reviews all of our social media itunes youtube and on rotten tomatoes so check that out also make sure you're following the podcast a homeworkies pod and homeworkies podcast all over social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews five stars. That really helps us so much. And if you are watching YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We just got over the seven K, which is very exciting on the channel. So if uh, most of our list um, viewers, most of our viewers on YouTube aren't subscribers. So if you're in that camp, please subscribe. It really helps the algorithm a lot. And uh, we also have the patron group, which is a ton of fun, especially for Way Home. We talk all about it in the patron group. And uh, and then we have all kinds of watch alongs and other perks. And then we have our merch store where you can get tons of fun homework inspired designs. So check that out. And uh, thanks so much, Casey. This was a lot of fun. And uh, we'll talk to y'all later. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>